Hi everyone, this is Chris with a special bonus video for you. This special bonus video is called the ultimate guide to task 2 grammar. Um, so lots of you have been asking grammar questions um, by email so I decided to make this video so that hopefully this satisfies everybody and gets everybody on the right track for grammar. I just thought that I would uh, make this video because there are certain really important things that I wanted to get across to you um, because the biggest improvements in grammar that I have found um, in my classes, in my real classes, has been when people change their attitude to grammar. Rather than teaching them specific grammar structures, like most teachers do, I try to change people's attitudes, the way they think about grammar, and that normally improves their band dramatically and quickly, and that's what we want to do here. We want to get you your band 7, 8 or 9 as quickly as possible. So that's what today's video is all about. So let's look at what we're going to do in this video. So today we're going to look at confusing grammar myths, so myths, things that people believe about IELTS grammar that aren't actually true. We're going to look at how to analyze function of sentences, not structures. How to analyze functions. A three-step grammar improvement plan. And the top 10 most common mistakes that I find in essays. So today we're going to focus on task two. So one thing that there will be no of is this V1 plus N plus V2 nonsense in this guide. In this video, there's going to be no verb plus noun plus all this thing. This is not helping you. It's actually stopping you producing a good essay. There is no way that a native English speaker would ever sit down and write an essay and think, uh, is it V plus or noun plus this? And think of it in a formulaic way. When I first started teaching in Asia, so I, I've taught in, in Vietnam, in China, in India, I couldn't believe that students are taught grammar in this way. If you like being taught grammar in this way, that's fine. If it suits you, that's absolutely fine. But I don't teach it this way because I don't think that it helps anybody. And when I was teaching in Europe, if you go and learn English in Europe, they don't teach grammar in this way. Um, and if you look at the average grammar scores for IELTS tests in Europe, they're much, much higher than the average grammar scores than in Asia. So um, I, sorry if you like being taught grammar in this way. Um, I'm going to try and teach it in a slightly different way. Um, and I hope that you'll uh, understand the way that I teach it and it will really, really help you. Um, when you stop thinking about grammar in this formula way, like plus noun, plus verb, plus it, your grammar will really, really improve. But if you really like that way, please keep doing it. But I think that I will uh, change your mind by the end of this video. So confusing grammar myths. A myth is something that lots of people believe that isn't actually true. So let's look at these six grammar myths. First is range, not accuracy. So most people think it is more important to have a range of structures than for them to actually be correct. So in the marking criteria, it says um, students should use a wide range of structures and lots of teachers and lots of books have seen this and they just tell students use a wide range of structures and they don't actually explain to the students what this means what does a range mean what structures mean so in the rest of this video I'm going to show you that you it's a hugely misunderstood area and I'm going to show you focus on this in the next slide so the next one is small mistakes. There's a big difference between small mistakes and mistakes that prevent communication. So um, lots of students, when they see small mistakes, like when I post students' essays, I don't do it so much anymore because of this, actually. Um, I would post a, a really, really good essay, like a band eight essay that a student had had done for me. And everybody would say, oh, that's a band five or band six. Why is it? Oh, because the person made three small mistakes in their, 
three small grammar mistakes or four small grammar mistakes. There's a big, big difference between small mistakes and mistakes that prevent communication. So the things that you don't want are big mistakes that s prevent me communication, that stop the examiner understanding what you're writing. Small mistakes should be avoided, of course. The, the fewer mistakes you make, the better. But there is this big, big difference between small mistakes and mistakes that prevent communication. For mistakes that prevent communication are the ones that really, really, really lower your score. Wide range of tenses. So structures and tenses do not mean the same thing. Uh, this is related to the first point I was making, range, not accuracy. Lots of students believe that wide range of structures means a wide range of tenses. Structures and tenses do not mean the same thing. Complex sentences. Complex and simple do not mean what you think they mean. So a complex sentence, lots of people think that this means using very high level grammar, a, a very long sentence with lots of punctuation, and a simple sentence is using just a really simple sent sentence with simple words, simple structures. They do not mean that. Wide range of structures. So again, it should actually state use of appropriate structures. It's not about using as many different structures as possible. It's about using the pro appropriate structures for the function that you're trying to use. And we're going to look at that in, again in one minute. And perfection. You must get everything correct to get a high score. This is a myth. Even band 9 essays have rare slips. You're all human. You're doing it under exam conditions. Even the very, very top grade, band 9, you don't have to get every single thing perfect. The examiner, IELTS, know that everybody makes small mistakes. Um, so this is related to the small mistakes. Point I made above, to get a band 9, you can make rare slips. To get a band 8, you can make a few small mistakes as well to get a band seven which is what most of you are trying to get you can make quite a few small mistakes you can't make any big mistakes but you can make quite a few small mistakes so these are all the myths that you need to stop uh, believing if you believe any of these myths they're going to prevent you from actually getting the score that you need and let's go on to the most confusing myth so function not structure so this is related to the range of structures the range of tenses that you use most people think about grammar how do I get a good mark for grammar I just use a range of structures I use a range of tenses and I'll get a really high score and this is the key so imagine that each structure and each tense is one of these kitchen utensils, one of these tools that we would use in the kitchen. So a person that thinks that a range of structures is the way to get a band 7, 8 or 9 is the type of person who would believe that in order to cook a good meal you must use a range of kitchen utensils. So if they were cooking a meal they would try to use every single one of these things in this picture. So they might uh, be chopping an onion and cutting it with a knife and then they uh, need to cut another onion and they think oh I need to use a range so I'll try to cut this with a spoon and then they need to uh, cut a tomato so they try and cut it with a pot or something like that. That's just stupid, that's silly to do that. What you need to do is use the appropriate structure at the appropriate time. So you might need to just to use a very simple structure, for example, to give your topic sentence, and let's say that's a knife. So you use that, and then you might use it again. A person who thinks that using a range of structures is the type of person who, like halfway through their essay, thinks, I haven't used the perfect future tense yet. I'll try and put that in there. And then they get to the conclusion and they think, I haven't used the third conditional yet, so I'll put that in there. That is totally inappropriate to do that. And it actually stops you answering the question correctly. It stops you using the correct structure. It just stops you 
clearly communicating. And whenever you try to use a wide, wide range of structures inappropriately, you're probably going to get most of them incorrect because you're trying to use things that you don't really know how to use. So if we look at this picture, I don't really, I'm not very good at cooking, but I don't really know what the thing to the left is for. Um, and if I tried to use that, I wouldn't be very successful. I don't know what the multicolored things on the right are either. If I tried to use them, I wouldn't be very successful. But I'm pretty good at using a knife, a bowl, a spoon, the basic things. And if I did that, I'd be able to cook a pretty good meal. So let's look at function, not structure, in a little bit more detail. So let's look at a causes paragraph. Imagine we get a causes and solution essay and we're on only going to look at the main body paragraph that deals with causes. So the overall structure would be topic sentence explanation and example. So we need to write three good sentences or might be four. Maybe we might have two sentences for explanation. But let's just, um, for this demonstration, let's just say there are three sentences. So let's look at the sentences. So the first sentence is our topic sentence. The main reason for global warming is the production of fossil fuels. So we'll, we'll use a very common example. Um, what, what's the main reason for global warming? What is the function of this sentence? So don't think about structure. Don't think about that yet. Just think about the function. Why do we use this sentence, why do we not use something else? So the function is to state the main reason for something. Very, very simple. Explanation. That is to say that the release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere causes the planet to heat up. To explain, that's the function. Very, very simple. Example. For example, every year millions of tons of CO2 are vented into the air by cold-fired power stations in the US. To give an example, okay, very, very simple function. Let's look at it in a little bit more detail. The main reason for global warming is the production of fossil fuels. If we were to use this for a different essay, the main reason for obesity is the consumption of fatty foods. Let's look at the explanation. That is to say that the release of greenhouse gases causes the planet to heat up. That is to say that the overeating of junk food causes men and women to become obese. So if we stop thinking about grammar in terms of structure and this verb plus noun equals that and all that, and the stuff that I really don't like, is we stop thinking about it that way and we start thinking about function. And some of you might be thinking now, oh, that's going to require me to actually do a bit of work. Well, I'm sorry, but the only way that you're going to write really good essays, seven, eight, nine essays, is to put in the work and actually analyze it and then use it in your own essays. Uh, if you want a system that just gives you some quick tips, then you're not going to get a seven, eight or nine. So it does require you to do a bit of extra work, but it will help you get a band seven, eight or nine, but it will also help you in the future with your English writing um, or just how you learn English in the future. Thinking about it this way will really, really help you. So let's look at a three-step grammar improvement plan. How are you going to improve your grammar? First step, understand functions. So there is not that many to learn. So think about a task two essay for, a, let's say, an opinion essay. First function is just paraphrasing the question. Second function, giving your opinion. Third function um, is outlining your main ideas. Three simple things to learn. And then in the main body, first fun I can't speak. Uh, sorry, uh, first function, that's difficult to say actually, um, topic sentence, and then you're going to explain, and then you're going to give an example. Okay, so it doesn't really take that much to analyze all the different essays and think about the functions for each of them. A lot of them are going to be kind of the same. Next step is identify and fix common problems. So we're going to go through the top 10 most common problems, but 
for most people, you will only need to focus on, say, two or three or three or four of these common problems. Like, for example, I had one student this morning who is very bad at articles. Um, she has a problem with plurals, like um, countable and un uncountable nouns. And she also has a problem with punctuation. And all the rest of her grammar is absolutely fine. So what we did was we just identified her three most common problems and then she was able to fix those problems and 90% of her grammar mistakes were those three problems so you might be making only one of them you might be making five of them but you need to identify what your common problems are the next step practice and produce so practicing and producing are two different things so practicing is when you say you have difficulty with punctuation use of commas and um, there are thousands of websites online where you can go on and do free practice um, exercises and you just practice 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 using commas you're aware of all of the rules and then produce produce refers to actually producing essays so going and writing a full essay and thinking about your use of let's say commas and producing an error-free sentence after error-free sentence and then having an error-free paragraph and then hopefully having lots of error-free sentences and an error-free essay at the end so very very simple like everything in IELTS Writing Academy just three steps each of them is easy to understand understand the functions of each sentence identify and fix your common problems, practice those common problems, and then produce good sentences and good essays. Next, we're going to go on to the 10 most common problems. Common problem number one, probably the most common problem of all. Fix this and you can raise your grammar score by one band. So the way that the bands work is uh, for grammar, the more error-free sentences you have, the higher the band is for grammar. So if you're making really small mistakes like articles, for example, so articles is the use of the words a, ah, and, and the, some people make these small mistakes in nearly every sentence because articles are used in nearly every sentence before nouns. So if you're making small mistakes in nearly every sentence, you're going to, you're going to really struggle to get more than a six in grammar but if you fix this problem then you can go up by at least one band saying that this is your common problem so it can really really help common problem number two subject verb agreement the subject of your sentence should always agree with the verb che get into the habit of checking these when you write so if this is a problem for you get into the habit of when you write a sentence checking the subject and the verb and making sure that they agree with each other tenses of course be aware of the different verb tenses you're using so the verb is going to tell you what tense you're using think about the situation you're writing about so lots of people in my class they make big errors with tenses and I said did you actually think about what you're writing and they say what do you mean I was like did you think about if it's past present or future uh, no I didn't well how are you ever going to use the correct tense if you don't think about the situation and you don't need a wide range of tenses in task two so most of the tenses are going think about the things that you're doing your topic sentence, your explanation, your opinion, all of these are just going to be present tense. You don't need to sit and try to use every single tense in the English language because that is not going to be appropriate. Examples are the most common function that require past tenses or future tenses. So uh, if you want to use a range of tenses, your examples are probably going to be the best place to do that. So you're not going to be able to use the future tense when you're giving an opinion, or you're not going to be able to use the past tense when you're giving an opinion. You can't say, um, in my opinion, I used to think, or I used to believe, or in my opinion, I will believe in the future. You're never going to do that. Um, you're not going to uh, use the future tense when explaining something. You won't say in the future or in the past. But giving examples, 
you might be able to talk about something like an experience that happened to you or a story from a newspaper or you might uh, speculate about the future in examples that's absolutely fine to do that but think about the situation and don't try to use a range of tenses unless they're appropriate common problem number four is punctuation the most common problem is use of commas so most people 99% of people, not 100%, some people don't do this, know how to use a full stop. At the end of a sentence, they know how to use a full stop. Um, the most common problem is the use of commas. So you have to learn the basic use of commas. Most people haven't actually looked this up. If you look up the rules and you think about them and you practice them, it becomes pretty easy on the use of commas. Also, when you, if you have a problem with this when you're reading, um, reading in English, think about why the person used a comma and why they didn't use a comma. Don't worry about semicolons unless you're advanced. So it's, it's not like you have to use semicolons or anything like that to get a high grade and um, focus on your weaknesses so most people's weaknesses are commas and uh, make sure you know how to use them conditional structures most commonly used in problem solution essays learn the main conditional structures think about why you would use them in an essay and normally use the second conditional to write about solutions you don't have to use the second conditional to write about solutions but if you are make sure that you're doing it correctly common problem number six relative clauses so examples are who that which these words will help with explaining things and with your cohesion and your coherence simply learn the rules and practice I can't uh, say it any more simple than that uh, number seven plurals countable and uncountable nouns so some nouns are countable some nouns are like uh, water are uncountable simply have to learn these so there's no trick there's nothing I can say which you know this group of words is countable this group of words is uncountable you simply have to learn these but if you're not sure, use another noun. So if this is a big problem for you, um, so some people this is a really common problem, it's a really big problem, um, but they're trying to use nouns that they aren't really aware of. So um, if this is a big problem, either you have to work really, really hard and make sure you learn all the different nouns, or you simply just use another noun um, that you are sure about. Prepositions. Like articles, these can lower your score by one band. So like articles, some people make preposition mistakes in nearly every sentence. So it because they have made mistakes in every single sentence, their grade gets, gets lowered from a band 7 or a band 8 to a band 6. So if you improve these, you can really, really boost your score so find out what your common problems are find out why you're making which prepositions mistakes you're making again and again as always it's about finding out what your personal problems are not about generally what's what's happening and common problem number nine verbing or to plus infinitive again this requires you to learn the appropriate use when do you use verbing when do you use to plus infinitive if not sure use something else and common problem number 10 word order read every sentence after you write it so uh, when you get fast at writing essays when you have really learned everything in IELTS Writing Academy and you're building up how quickly you can do the essays I would start reading each sentence after you write it to check for grammar score mistakes read each paragraph after you write it then so you read each sentence check for grammar when you complete a full paragraph read it again and then read everything at the end this might take you a little bit of time but it will ensure that you make fewer mistakes uh, with word order a little trick is if something sounds strange or sounds weird there's probably a word order mistake so when you're checking your sentences or when you're checking your paragraphs if it just doesn't sound correct and you and this goes for most grammar mistakes then you might have a word order mistake and you need to think about that
So fixing your mistakes, how do we do this? Use a grammar book or online resource to find out the rules. So grammar means rules, means law. Grammar means the, the rules of the language. So for each grammar point, there are rules. So if you don't know the rules, you're not going to be able to ever fix it. So a key part of fixing your grammar mistakes is finding out what the rules are. Then practice online, as I've said, and produce it in a real essay. Remember, first of all, you have to understand the functions of different sentences. If you understand them, then you'll be able to understand what you're doing in your essays. Identify, so identify your common mistakes, fix them, and then produce. Produce real sentences in real essays that are correct, that have the appropriate structure, appropriate tense, appropriate function, and have no mistakes in it. And if you do all of that, then you're going to get a very high mark for grammar.